Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 21st Century Business Forum. I'm your host, Clay Young. Our special guest today is LinkedIn expert and author, Mr. Richard Bliss. Now, as a business professional, most of us are on LinkedIn, and we probably think we're doing a pretty darn good job at it. Yeah, professional headshot, check. An about section that reads like a summary of our resume, check. Full resume of experience, check. A few short, punchy posts over the past year that, of course, we know have to be business-related, check. A few hundred of our somewhat closest friends, check, check, check. But here's the thing. Is that really what success looks like on LinkedIn? Do we really, really understand the full power of this platform? Are we realizing its full return on investment for our own bottom line? Now, we have the expert mastering LinkedIn in the studio today. From maximizing your profile to mastering the secret of algorithms, fancy word, that are like no other social platform we use, these next few minutes will bring measurable returns for your business. Richard Bliss of Bliss Point Consulting is a social media coach. He is also the author of Digital First Leadership and is recognized as one of LinkedIn's top voices. Good morning, Richard, and thank you so much for being with us today. Okay, let's start with what is arguably the most important question of the day, and that's this. What's the biggest misunderstanding business people have about LinkedIn? The biggest misunderstanding, and I have encountered this with so many of my clients, is that LinkedIn is a online resume. And that's where I go. If I'm active on LinkedIn, I got to be careful because my boss is going to see me active, think I'm looking for a new job. Executives tell me I don't need to be on LinkedIn. I already have a job. That's one of the biggest misconceptions that today LinkedIn is the single most effective and and uh, social media platform with impact in the business world. And so that's what we need to think about. Is it hard to get people to translate their thinking into what you just said? Yes and no. It's okay. hard. Um, the, the yes is that because there's that mindset, I wrote about it in my book that uh, there's these three myths that most executives leaders have about social media. One is I don't have the time because they see their kids on it all the time. They're like, I can't do that. Two, it's all about self-promotion because they see politicians, sports, you know, entertainment people. I had one executive tell me, I don't care what the Kardashians have for breakfast. Why should I be on, <laughs> right? What do I care? And then the third one is, this is the surprising one, is that many of them don't believe they have any time, excuse me, they don't have anything relevant to say. And in today's world, that would be like asking an executive or a salesperson, if I put you in front of your customers, would you have struggle to have something to say? And they're like, no. Then why would you struggle to have something to say in a forum designed to start and foster conversations amongst business people? And hmm. so that's, that's once I get past that myth in their head, it becomes much easier for them to see that. And then there's a, a few things we can do that drives some uh, success for them. And then they start to feel it emotionally. Hmm. Okay. Well, what are the top three problems uh, with how many of the companies and their executives are using LinkedIn right now? A couple of ones. Uh, one is, and I, I've written extensively about this, is believing that LinkedIn is like a social media, all these other social media platforms. So that's one of the, the challenges they face with. So they have a strategy for LinkedIn that is mimicking their strategy for Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Here's the fundamental difference. LinkedIn drives their revenue. Well, let me switch the question. We all know how Facebook makes their money mm -hmm. off of using our eyeballs to drive advertising dollars. Mm -hmm. Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, it's all the same. The difference is LinkedIn makes 80% of their revenue off of paying customers, us paying to use their platform. And I ask people all the time, how many of you would pay to use TikTok? No. Or pay to use Facebook? No. But a substantial number of my clients spend more than a million dollars a year using LinkedIn, paying to use LinkedIn, not paying for advertising, but paying for the, the ability to use tools that are built around LinkedIn. So that's one of the biggest challenges is shifting your strategy to understand that LinkedIn operates fundamentally different. Another one is, is that oftentimes we perceive social media as a personal activity. Hey, this is mine. Don't tell me to be a shill for the company. And so a salesperson who's asked to share something is going to hesitate. 
what we're able to do is show the audience and show executives and salespeople and marketing people and accounting people that look, when you start using the tool to engage in conversations with your customers, your partners and your vendors, that it's a natural conversation that helps you do your job, not just look for a job and not just promote the company. And the probably the third one is that it comes down to training, getting a lot of the people entering the workforce today grew up on social media, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they were born with an Instagram account. The challenge is, is that understanding how to use these tools in a business setting. You and I have been to numerous business networking events, right? You and I might remember the concept of a Rolodex, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> My team says, yeah, we saw one on a, uh, in a museum once. It was like a right. museum, right? Right. Or we had those laminated sheets with the business cards where one yes. after another. Yes. Right. Well, the generation that's entering the workforce today doesn't have business cards, has no, no. idea what a Rolodex is. Right. And even if you say, well, LinkedIn's an electronic Rolodex, woo, well, they, they're like, I don't understand that reference. And so the biggest challenge is, is, is getting, um, a training in place that helps this gener younger generation and the older generation figure out how to use these tools effectively, not just self-promotion or not to look for a job, but how do I engage with my prospects and customers in such a way that it drives business? Hmm. Well, how is networking different online versus person to person in person? I love this question because in person, we do it naturally, right? You and I meet, we might share, I'm going to ask you a question. We were just talking about cuisine, you know, Louisiana. I'm here in the San Francisco Bay area. It's very natural, but online, when you have that asynchronous communication where it's not happening in real time, mm -hmm. you have to manufacture that same experience. And when I use the word manufacture, now people hear inauthentic, artificial, but what you need to do is think, okay, if I want that person to be interested in me, what do I need to do? I need to be interested in them. How do I demonstrate interest in them? Well, if you and I are in person, I'm going to lean in. You're going to see my facial expressions. I'm going to ask you questions online. That's a lot harder to do on LinkedIn. Right. But if I have a prospect that I want to get in front of, and they don't know who I am. The last thing I want to do is ask something from them before I give them something. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, one of the greatest tools, and you know this, if you want to be memorable to somebody, what's the number one thing you should remember about them? You want to take a guess? Their name. Their name. <laughs> Their name. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it is the School most precious. It is. It is the most precious thing. And if you as a salesperson remember their name, bam, yeah. you're already ahead of the game. Okay. Well, that's giving something. I gave enough space in my head to keep you there to, to remember and give it back to you. I've given you something. I've given you, a, hey, he, he, he remembered me. Online, we need, so often we find ourselves asking, hey, can I have this connection request? Hey, can I have this meeting with you? Hey, can you open this email? Hey, can you go watch this YouTube video? Can you ask, 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 take, take, take? And what we teach is to flip that around. Give, well, what can I give? It's not on LinkedIn, give them a like, you liked it. But more than that, if they posted something, take the time to read it and then comment with insight. Hey, Clay, I noticed on your post, I really liked this post. And one of the things I liked about it is the point three that you made in the article that you shared or whatever, where it talked about this, this, and this. I find this really um, important and I've used it with my clients and I can see how it would certainly apply to the, the situation you've put in place. Thank you for sharing it. That was really helpful. If I left that comment on your post, do you think you'd notice? Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Because most of the comments you get and I, and I get, and most people is good job. Congrats. Well, right. the, and LinkedIn's like, this is not a conversation. You didn't add any value because Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and uh, Facebook teach us to respond to the author. Yep. But LinkedIn's different. If I leave a comment on your post, just like I just outlined, that comment is being shown to my audience. 
my audience, not your audience, mm -hmm. my audience. And mm -hmm. so when I leave a comment, it's a perfect opportunity for me to add to the conversation, but also help my audience understand the value I'm giving and, and that they can see, oh, this guy, Richard, I keep seeing him show up in these conversations and saying things and adding value. Well, he's, he's interesting. I think I might have him come connect with me, maybe do some business with me, but that giving, giving a comment, giving advice, giving into the uh, conversation before I ask for anything is critical to being successful online. And sometimes you're doing it, I'm gonna put this in air quotes, artificially, because I've done my research, I've looked you up, I know where you went to school, I know some things about you, and so I'm purposely dropping in some nuggets to get your attention. I would do that naturally if we were meeting in person, but I have to manufacture it online because we're not meeting in person and I have to make it feel authentic. It is, it's just not being done spontaneously. Now, I wanna lean in on that just a little bit because for people to catch this, because we started, and, and, and in our intro, we talked about people's mis, misconceptions and, and misunderstanding of how LinkedIn works. You're, what you said, because this is an audience of, of entrepreneurs and, and business owners, you're asking people to do the same thing online that they would do if they met someone in person, to actually engage them, to give some protein to the interaction so that it helps. But lean in a little bit for people to understand what the ROI on that would be. Like if, if, if you're on pages and you're doing that and you're getting the return. Sure. So think about this. If I was to walk up to you, we've never met. And I'm like, hey, can I get your business card, uh, your phone number so I can give you a call and uh, try to sell you my services? That's the first engagement we have. You're like, whoa. Yeah, you're right. Back. Slow down there, buddy. Um, but instead, what we want to do is find ways to engage with our prospects and audience in such a way that it brings it back to a conversation. So here's some things that I teach a lot of, a lot of people. Look, you've got a prospect. You've got somebody you want to get in front of. It might be a, a customer, a hiring manager, a, a business person that you want to do business, whatever reason. Go do your homework and now find a way to engage with their content in such a way that it adds to the conversation or create a piece of content on your own saying, I read an interesting article from this gentleman by Clay uh, that shared it. Here's what, what the article had to say. And I tag you in that post. Mm -hmm. Well, Clay, now you're going to get notified. Richard Bliss mentioned you in a post. What's the first question you're going to ask yourself? What are you going to ask yourself? If, if, I, if I don't know you, yeah. uh, I'm going to ask who you are or go right? check you out. Yeah. Right? Who's, who's this guy, Richard Bliss? I know yeah. that's hard to believe. I got, um, but yeah, who is this guy, Richard Bliss? <laughs> and then the first thing you're going to do is go check out what I said. What is this guy saying about me? We are human nature. We can't avoid this. If I was to tag you in a, and then you, you go and read it and it says, I read this interesting article shared by Clay. Here's what the article said, blah, 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 blah. I find this very insightful. One of the things I do with my clients is this, this, and this, and I can see how this article will really help them. Okay, there's my post. Right. Now, how many people are gonna see that? I don't care. All I care is if one person sees it, you. You're gonna get notified, Richard Bliss mentions you in a post. Mm -hmm. You're going to go look. Mm -hmm. You're going to see and be introduced to me for the very first time. And you're not going to be, it's going to be a safe environment because I'm not there asking for anything. I'm not asking for your contact information, an appointment, nothing, but I'm giving you a tremendous amount of acknowledgement, respect, uh, kudos, attention, um, access to my network. All of these things I gave to you long before we ever entered into any kind of relationship. I've done this with multiple salespeople and you know what happens? When they apply it, the prospect tends to be the first person to reach out and ask for the connection request and for the sales call. The prospect wow. is turning themselves in saying, hey, <laughs> I saw that thing because it's a safe environment. They just simply get to see it and not have to be a, feel threatened or do I want to accept this connection request because I think this guy's just going to turn around and sell me something. Mm -hmm. And instead... No. Wow. Look at these nice things he had to say about me. And it's a great way as a door opener to be exposed and start a, re a true, meaningful relationship with a person online. You know, Richard, I always say never underestimate 
uh, the power of someone being nosy <laughs> and wanting to know about you. If they post something, people were going to go look and try to find out uh, who you are. So I love that's very well said. In your book, Digital First, you remind us that our digital presence defines who we are even before we show up uh, in person. So you say it's an opportunity that few business leaders use to take uh, use to their advantage. What are those opportunities? The opportunity is, is that in today's world, if I, today, especially coming out of COVID, um, mm -hmm. I tell in the book, the reason that I wrote the, I wrote the book pre COVID, but it's designed around the idea that in today's business world, we meet people first through our social media interaction. I met you first through your LinkedIn profile before you and I ever met and talked and heard each other's voices and anything. That means that we have to start thinking as leaders and as solopreneurs that our digital presence defines who we are long before we're able to reinforce it with our physical presence. Now, for most people, that was, that was the opposite for almost uh, you know, an older generation. We would meet people at a networking event, at work, on a phone call, and then we would go look them up. Not anymore. Today, it's I'm going to make a decision on whether I want to do business with you, whether I want to be engaged with you based on meeting you through a digital impression that you have very little control over when I'm going to see it, how I'm going to react. I have a saying, Clay, and this is what I say for a leaders. Your inability to master a 21st century communication tool calls into question your ability to lead a 21st century organization. If you're trying to recruit and you're the CEO and your recruitees go and check out your LinkedIn profile, you have no banner, you've got a, a outdated photo, uh, right? You've got 82 connections, you have no con. They're gonna like, do I wanna go work for this individual? Hmm. Even, and it doesn't even matter if it's a tech company. It's look, these, especially the younger generation, it's all about online presence. And they are going to judge leaders of today of whether they want to work for them based on their online presence. And for so many leaders of a certain generation, they just haven't really thought about it that way. It's just been a wow. second nature. I was on a call with two executives today and I pulled up their LinkedIn profile in front of them. And they said, oh, no, no, no. You know, I haven't updated in years. And you know what my response is? You don't have to tell me that. I can see that. Right. And they're trying to use a disclaimer. It's like too late. I've already seen it. And so that's the ROI for executives is that, look, you're the number one salesperson at your organization. You're the number one recruiter at your organization. You're more valuable as a marketing asset than anything the marketing department can spend money on. Make sure you are representing yourself and your organization in such a way that it's demonstrating value to your prospective customers, partners, and fellow employees. And that's what I talk about in this digital first leadership concept. You got to be yes. out there first digitally long before you get to make up for it with your sparkling personality. It's so brilliant. By the way, tell that bird I don't need a co-host. I could hear it in the background over there. Yeah, uh, and so <laughs> that's the problem for, for your audience. I am in a tent in my backyard in my garden, and I have crows that come and visit me during the day. And so that's... <laughs> It drives my wife nuts, but they sit right above my tent and peek in and like, hey, because I feed them peanuts. So oh, there it is. That's the problem. Well, well listen, you've said um, your online reputation doesn't follow you. You follow it. What yep. do you mean by that? In today's world, similar to what I was just saying, that we build up in the book. I use a perfect example of uh, the, the presidential election when Bloomberg decided to enter the race. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he started spending money like crazy and it was working mm -hmm. because we were all getting this impression of this guy got things done. He knew how to take care of it. He was on top of it. This was a guy who was, who could solve so many of our problems based on what we were seeing. The first debate happened mm -hmm. and Bloomberg's on stage and we're all confused because the person we're seeing online is not matching this out of touch, dismissive, slightly arrogant, unprepared individual who's really bored and doesn't wanna be there. 
His online reputation established it. His in-person reputation crushed it. His campaign ended almost instantly after we got to see what he was like in person. This is so important for us today is that how you build your online presence is what guides and directs. And you need to make sure that you reinforce and follow that so that when somebody meets you in person, they're not like, wait, that's, Clay, it is a small, and I, this is going to be a, we had a, a sales director who told a personal story. He went into a client and the client insisted that the person he was now meeting with sitting in front of him was not the person that he was supposed to meet with. He's like, what are you talking about? Well, I went and looked at your LinkedIn profile first and you had a full head of hair. <laughs> Sorry, you know where I'm going with this, right? <laughs> He's like, but you don't. And it was a, that was a tiny little thing that threw the prospect, the customer off. He's like, I can't, you're not the same person. He's like, well, yeah, I haven't updated my profile in a while. Maybe you should update it. My team gives me a hard time because I've started wearing glasses and my profile picture was about 10 years old and I thought it still looked like me. And they were politely saying, no, you need to update that. So it's tiny little things like that or it's something as big as a billion dollar ad campaign where you're trying to build a presence and then suddenly having a physical presence that destroys the whole thing. So whether you're a mid-level manager, a solopreneur, or the CEO of a tech company, you need to make sure that what's online matches what's in person and to make sure you constantly are aware of reinforcing that. Yeah, and, and again, I wanna lean in on that because that's so important. You, you mentioned some of the requisite things that the LinkedIn post should have and setting yeah. it up, but just to make certain that everybody in the room is catching what you are saying, you can decide on what you want that profile and that that aura to be on LinkedIn. Just be certain that when you show up, you're backing you up what they saw there. That's exactly right. That you're backing up, that you're matching it. That yeah. you're matching it with the energy, that you're matching it with the interest, that you're that you're not just there to sell something, or you're not just there, right, to 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 as he did, check in and be bored and why am I here? Uh it's it's something I've seen it with a lot of successful leaders. Uh Here's an example. In my book, I tell the story of an executive that I've worked with and I'm walking with him at a trade show and I'm following him around and, I, and he says, hey, I gotta go visit our booth. I'm like, okay, why? He said, I need to make sure that they have the thick carpeting. I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of interesting. And so we go over because he tells me the story that as a young sales person for years, he had to work trade show booths and he got the thinnest carpet because they'd save money, a thin slice of carpet and cement. And after all day standing at that booth, it would kill his back. So he swore that whenever he got in a position to make a difference in decision-making, he would always get the thickest carpet and the thickest padding. And he was going by his booth to make sure his team had followed up on that. I got to tell you, I stopped and said, Peter, you need to share that story. He's right. like, why? Who cares about that story? A lot of people care about that story. And, we, and I wrote that story up for him and we posted that on LinkedIn. A hundred thousand people read it. And a lot of them said, I know exactly either they had been in that situation standing on that thick carpet or so much appreciated an executive who was willing to take. Peter didn't even realize that he was doing it, but that was a perfect example of here. Here's the story I'm telling and here's how I'm backing it up. This is I'm not just saying things that I want people to hear. I'm actually doing the things that, that I'm talking about. I'm walking the walk. All right, so let's do a hypothetical now, Richard. I, if I'm a CEO or an entrepreneur and I've got all these things to do all day long, every day, and I don't really have time, quote unquote, to build my brand on social media, tell me why I'm wrong. Well, the first answer is you're not really wrong. You don't have a lot of time. And so the first thing I suggest is pick one. Pick one okay. platform, and I'm going to tell you LinkedIn. Here's why. Not all of your customers' prospects or contacts are on Facebook. They're not all on Instagram. They're not all on TikTok. 100% of them are on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So pick LinkedIn. So that's number one. Second step, make sure you get your profile set up so it speaks to your audience. I met with somebody today who had an 18, since they were 18, the journey they made to get to where they are today. Your prospects and customers don't care. 
All they care about is what problem can you help me solve today moving forward? And unless you, so get your profile geared towards solving your customers' problems and your prospects or your leadership or whatever that might be. Number two or three or whatever number we're on, find a behavior. So here's what I recommend. One, LinkedIn is not about how much content I can pump out there. We could, we could spend hours talking about the algorithm and how LinkedIn only shares your content to 10% of your network. It does not share your content with everybody. It only tests it. So what you need to do is think about, I'm going to make one post a week around something that's important to my audience. And I'm going to take the time and write up about 150 and 200 words. Maybe I can have somebody help me with that. But I'm going to do one post a week. And then I'm going to ask my audience to participate in that conversation. The rest of the time. So that's going to take a little bit of time, maybe 30 minutes. That's going to, let's say Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, though, I have one request or one suggestion to the solopreneur or the executive. And that is go find two or three people to leave a comment. LinkedIn rewards you for content. That's true. But the golden coin of the LinkedIn realm is commenting. Here's a promise I can make to your audience. If they were to stop posting for a week, no more posting for a week, it's how hard for a lot of solopreneurs, and instead leave three comments a day. And when I say leave a comment, I don't mean good job. I mean, leave a comment like we talked about earlier. Go add value to a conversation. Who should you comment on? Your first degree connections, people in your industry, and also then go find some third, second or third degree connections where you can add to that conversation. You do that for four days, three times a day. That's it. That's going to take you maybe 10 minutes each day. I guarantee your audience right now that if they do that strategy, the number of people looking and coming to their LinkedIn profile will jump by 100 to 300% in a single week. 100 to 300 percent increase. I have had clients get more view by simply taking that challenge, getting more people looking at their profile that week than the previous 90 days combined. Wow. Here's why we have been trained to, by SEO and all of these other things throw up content, blog, YouTube video, whatever, and then drive people to that content. That is not the way it works today. My audience is here what is it what's that famous why did you rob banks the famous quote because that's where the money is right right why should i go comment on other people's content because that's where your customers are rather than trying to create content and drive your customers to you go find your customers and prospects content and comment on their content one they'll get notified richard bliss commented on your post really what did he have to say and there's a great job, congrats. No, 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 no. There's adding value to the conversation. And now straight, you start doing that with strangers in areas that you want to be known for. Immediately, they and their audience will start to say, who is this person? I'm interested. And they're just going to simply click on your name and go check out your profile. And your profile is optimized to talk to that audience, not to talk to a hiring manager or a recruiter. And that will drive a significant amount of conversations because now if you have premium, you can see who's looking at your LinkedIn profile. And suddenly you're going to see all of these people take, checking you out. You can now follow up with them. Say, hey, I saw that you took a look at my profile. Um, is there something I can help you with? Or you can now start following them. That commenting strategy, Clay, is the single greatest and most impactful thing anyone can do on LinkedIn to help build their personal brand and the brand of the organization they represent, whether it's their own company or they're working for a larger conglomerate. So you, you, you referenced earlier all that's on the plate of a CEO, uh, obviously, but if, if you have a team large or small, how do you get them to spend more time harnessing the power of what LinkedIn is? You hire Bliss Point to come in and train your organization. <laughs> oh, wait, I saw <laughs> Man, you hit that one right on the screw. Well, that you? was like, open the barn door. I'm just going right through that one. Now, here's, here's the point I'm making, is that you do need, so 
oftentimes we have success because we start at the senior leadership level with a lot of the clients that we work with. And I help executives understand how their presence has a huge impact on marketing, recruiting, and sales. Once the executive gets it, and some of that social shaming, I simply pull up their LinkedIn profile in front of their peers and they're embarrassed. And they don't want to be embarrassed like that. But once the leadership gets it, it now becomes so much more powerful for the team members. I have a client who I've been working with now for two years, uh, and they are based out of London, Boston, Tel Aviv, and Ottawa. And uh, what's cool is that they were just named the number one most socially active company on LinkedIn in the UK for the entire year of 2021. They were number one. Well, I take a lot of pride in that because I sat down with their entire organization and taught them the why behind the requests that are being made to participate. I then started getting feedback from them telling me, oh, I tried these techniques. I had a prospect call me. Oh, look what we did. And suddenly the success reinforced itself. Rather than me just preaching, I was able to get inside and help them see tangible results that emotionally touch them. I mean, look, if I, nobody puts out content on LinkedIn hoping nobody sees it. So instead, if you can demonstrate to them how you follow some LinkedIn rules and then how it generates huge responses, well, you just want to do that more. And then if you see your, not that salespeople are type A personalities, but they're type A personalities. Right. And they see their peers having success. They're like, okay, what is he doing? Or what is she doing? I want to do that. And that's one of the key ways that we've had success working with companies of all sizes is you get in there and you don't just preach concepts. We give tangible, actionable items that look, if you do this today, I'll give you one, Clay, because I know we're almost out of time. Here's the thing. If you were to make a post today, right now, no pictures, because pictures tend to reduce the number of impressions you get on LinkedIn. That's a shock. We can go into that on another session. No link, because link reduces, because you're driving people off the platform. So 150 words of text, three to five hashtags. Less than that, LinkedIn demotes your post. More than that, LinkedIn demotes your post. Three to five hashtags, 150 words, and you get 10 comments on that post in the first hour. The LinkedIn algorithm will show your post to a minimum of 1,000 people within the next 24 hours. Wow. I had a young woman in my training just recently come straight out of the university. Her first job the previous week required her to get a LinkedIn account. She was connected to the only people she was connected to were on the call, 32 people. We had her make a post. We all commented on it in the first hour. She generated 1,750 views on that post in the next 24 hours, simply oh, wow. because and it has nothing to do with the size of your network. These simple rules, when you're able to demonstrate it in near real time, causes people to believe because they've had training after training and it's all over the place. But when I come in and say, do these simple things, like I just said, leave three comments for the next week and you're gonna see a 100 to 300% increase. Well, that's a metric that people can measure. When I say, make a post, have your team come together and comment on it, you'll have a thousand people look at it by tomorrow. That's something they can actually do and prove. And that's the key ingredient when it comes to helping organizations make that change, is giving them actionable items that see real results that immediately speak to them on an intellectual and emotional level. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So I want to follow up here. What would I never think to do on LinkedIn that is actually critical to my actual profile's success? There's a thousand things, but let me give you one. <laughs> let me give you one. Your about section. This is the single most difficult aspect of LinkedIn is the about section. Because so often, one, we don't like to talk about ourselves. And two, we're we're not sure what we need to say, right? And so what you have is people putting up their random, some people don't even put anything. If you don't have an about section, LinkedIn's gonna hide your content from your audience because their attitude is, look, if you're not gonna make yourself look good on our platform, we're not gonna share your content with anybody on our platform. So here's what you should do. Your about section, 
should so oftentimes i will see uh senior sales executive with a demonstrative history of hitting quota and growing revenue within target accounts okay so if i'm your prospect i'm a target because what you're saying is your number one thing so so what would you say instead you'd say something like that so for example clay um let's pull up your linkedin i know we only have a second but let's pull up Jeez. your <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, we're here. <laughs> I'm not going to share the screen, but I'm looking at your LinkedIn profile. Okay. Clay Young. And I see no background image, Clay. Yeah. <laughs> There's no visual representation here. I see a nice picture of you with your thumb like this, but it's so far away that on a mobile device as a thumbnail, I can't see your face. And I really want to see your face. Bring that okay. picture in, lighten it up. Let me see your face. All right. You're about section. I am not seeing. I am not seeing any about section. So people are coming to this show. They're watching. They're oh, go check out Clay. Oh, oh, that's so going to happen. Don't worry. I'm fixing that. <laughs> All right. So here is what we're going to say instead, because you're. A, I'm going to take a guess. You're a fairly uh, Baton Rouge native, right? Yes. Okay. What we're going to say is something like this. In my career, I've had the opportunity of working with and spending time with a wide variety of people from all walks of life and all parts of the country. But the key ingredient I've discovered, both as a Louisiana and Baton Rouge native, and as someone who is sincerely interested in the success of others, I have learned that two things stand out to make anybody successful. One is curiosity, and two is humility. In the role of curiosity, I've discovered that it's so important to be interested in the things around you, whether that's how we're changing the world today or how people are making impacts in the things that we do. And two is humility. Recognizing that in any time, in any relationship, we have the opportunity of learning from others to help us be better. And then in turn, we're able to share what we know. These two attributes have helped me define my career and helped me be successful as I've continued to work here, both in the Baton Rouge area, but also extending out far beyond the reaches of my region into those people who have lives that are touching our country and our society in so many ways. Okay. Excuse. Oh, hold on. Excuse me. Excuse me. One second. <laughs> Tim, did we get that? We got that. We can we transcribe that, please? Okay. All right. Y'all all heard it, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That. Wow. Okay. But so, I've got to, and we haven't known each other that long, but no. I got to believe that those were two things that I hit on pretty good. Well, absolutely. And and be, being in business for so long, it's it's important. You know, Richard, I always tell people, I don't like modesty. I value humility. They're different things. Modesty is pretending not to be good at something that you really worked hard to be good at. Or you right. go, oh, no, 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 no. Humility is saying, thank you very much. Just that simple. And so I really don't trust I, you. It, what, with what you're saying about LinkedIn, I lean in on that. I was telling Tim a second ago, and there's always, there's so much protein in everything you're giving. And for a lot of people, that's one of the reasons why they haven't done what you said is the value hasn't been described to them in the ways that you have you you are basically telling people that this is the 25 30 year old mod 30 years ago model where you would sit in a class and they tell you how to engage someone in person you can touch so many more people now using social media at a fraction of the cost so that's and, why this yeah. is so important and so yeah now the way you just explained it by roasting me here on the show is so valuable to so many listening here today. But I think if you're saying the first thing someone should do to fix their LinkedIn page, if they haven't done some of the things that you've advised, what would that first thing be outside of the about section that I'll get on ASAP? Banner image, visual representation so that people see something that connects with them. That's mm -hmm. number one. Mm -hmm. Photo that they humanize that photo. I want to see people's faces. Women tend to be a long ways away because they want to show off their hair. Men tend to want to show off the, the outfit they're in. I see so many wedding photos or a significant other who's been cut out of your life, but they're not quite cut out of that photo because you really looked good in that tux. No, <laughs> make it a picture that people can see and relate to. Your headline, uh, let people know who you are, who you work for, and what you do. That's that little headline that follows you around everywhere. And then what I already touched on is that about section. Those four key ingredients are the first four things that are gonna make an impact with your audience, with your customers, with your prospects, with your employees. 
Now we can get down into your education. By the way, I recommend for most of the audiences to remove the graduation dates of your education. And the reason is, is because there's only one reason somebody looks at your graduation date. I want to know how old you are. Okay. Okay. And in today's business world, technically that's illegal if I'm using that as a decision in business. Right. So, and especially for women, there is no reason to have that graduation date there. You do not need to explain that you graduated from the university last year right. or you somehow in the late 1900s is when you started your technology <laughs> career. Okay. You laugh, but it's true. So those, those four things, plus the dates on your graduate uh, education, those are the well, things listen, that set you apart. That was going to be my, that was the, the close question before I said goodbye, but you just kind of gave me something else to riff off of. All right. I think that's valuable. So uh, two sides to this for, from the business standpoint, social media does give you an opportunity to go learn about someone before you make a decision about hiring uh, them for your company or organization. So I'd like you to talk about that aspect of it and how valuable it is. And then lean in a little bit more on what you just said. You have to also be careful. I don't want to say defensive, but careful yeah. in what's out there because it, it might be used against you. It might. So I see this all the time, 30 plus years in the industry. Okay. So my question is I'm in technology. All right. And this is usually my team, which is made up mostly of millennials. Uh, <laughs> so what were you doing in the late 1900s? that's really pertinent to my technology decisions today. Right. What does floppy disks have to do with uh, virtual data centers, AI, machine learning, and, and they're like, well, no, I have all this experience. Yeah, but I'm asking, are you in the last legs of your career? If I hire you, are you just checking out and you're done? And are you really relevant in how fast technology is moving today based on the fact that you're coming from DOS and floppy disks? Hmm. That's one thing that people need to be aware of is that careful, that number that you thought was a shortcut to showing your seniority and experience or recent graduate where I majored in business administration, blah, blah, blah. Why are you leading with that? Well, I'm really proud of it. Yeah, but anybody who's hiring you, anybody who's doing business with you, I have clients where they're coming out of the university and talking to people who have been in their careers longer than they've been alive. And the last thing they wanna do is say, look, I graduated from the university last year and I really don't know anything, but would you take a phone call with me? No. So what you do though, is a young person will come to me and say, well, what do I say? I don't have any work experience. Ah, but you have life experience. For example, if you played team sports, we could say, one of the things, the philosophies I had in life is understanding that it's not all about the individual, but it's about the team. No matter what role you have on the team, whether it's a tenant from tennis, being on a tennis team, or some team to a football team, the team aspect of everything is so important in my role. And I'm working closely with my customers committed to their success as much as they are. All right. There's a, you could be straight out of the university, yet use some of that background experience to draw upon that. Um, that. That are things for people to think about the gotchas. And also, what personal information. There's a difference between private and personal. Private information, for example, here's a fun little fact. I'm from Olympia, Washington. Okay, that's not personal. Oh, it's personal, but not private. I uh, lived in San Diego. Personal, not private. I have a brother named John, personal, maybe private, and I work in tech. Go ahead and Google Richard Bliss San Diego. The first entry you will find is a Wikipedia entry about Richard Bliss from Olympia, Washington, living in San Diego in the tech industry, being arrested in Russia as an American spy. <laughs> yes, yes. What Absolutely. do you mean yes? Did you go Google me? I remembered the story. Yes. <laughs> Now, his brother John is mentioned in this article as saying, my brother is not a spy. This is not me. This is not me. And so the point, the point here is, is that you need to be in control of your narrative. Otherwise, somebody else is going to take control of that narrative. And by the way, that's all true. There is a Richard Bliss from Olympia, I, Washington. I, I, wasn't there a movie about that or something? I, I, I don't know if the movie. Now, for most people, it was, it was 20 years ago. Um, but wow. at the time I was heavily involved in the media and I got asked every, my mother called me, where are you? <laughs> I am not in Russia. Okay. My point here is, is that make sure we are adding content in such a way that we are adding to that narrative. I talked to a guy today who's a founder of a tech company. I looked at his work history, bartender. 
I'm like, do you really want to be approaching investors and showing that three jobs ago, your job was a bartender? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing against bartending, but right. is it relevant to today? But so many people think, well, it's my LinkedIn. I have to, it's my resume. No, it's not your resume. It's your online presence today, moving forward and how you want to do business with the people around you. And that's the key thing to think about. I don't know if I answered your question. I got no, way off. No, you did. Of my... That was that was an entertaining uh, way to go. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't Google you to find out that you were in <laughs> Russia and arrested. But I remembered the name because, as you say, it was about twenty years ago. And as as some people around here know, I, I, I at the time I was doing something in talk radio as well. So I remember that. Oh man, this has been so valuable on so many levels for both the employee and the employer. I think you've given so many things for people to use and practice and add to their uh, LinkedIn experience like me, which I'll get on that right away. Thank you so much for joining us today, Richard. Uh, as, uh, as we talked, I know I, I got a lot out of this conversation. I'm sure our audience did as well. Clay, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. This has been wonderful. Thank you. And I'd like to also thank you, our sponsors, for making this show possible, as well as you, our audience, for tuning in. We'll see you next month on the 21st Century Business Forum.